Okay, so yesterday I mentioned my engine test stand. Uh, here it is. I thought some of you might be a little bit interested in it. I'll give you some details on the uh, construction, some of my thoughts and reasonings behind the way I did some things, and uh, uh, hopefully if you guys uh, are interested, you'll build one yourself. Okay, before I uh, go into the details of how I built it and or any of the dimensions and that sort of thing, I forgot to just quickly tell you that the primary uh, structure of this uh, test stand is two inch square tubing with a one eighth inch wall. Now that's not really critical. Uh, that's what I just happen to have on hand. You could probably use thinner wall. I wouldn't go with much smaller uh, dimensions on it, but uh, but two inch tubing probably of any thickness would do unless you've got a monster engine going on your test stand as well. Uh, there's some quarter or uh, one and a half inch angle in this unit there's quarter inch plate for various uh, bits and pieces there there's eighth inch plate there's one inch square tubing some three quarter inch square tubing and so on generally speaking uh, you can use what you see fit none of those uh, sizes are particularly critical um, we'll go on to the actual structure of the unit now okay so looking at the base here uh, what we've got is once again it's two inch uh, square tubing, one eighth inch wall. Uh, the caster support uh, plates are, I believe, quarter inch plate, although it looks like it might be three sixteenths plate. Once again, not too critical. You know, just do a good job welding them. The casters themselves are four inch casters. That's once again what I had, and it's handy for me in my shop. Anything smaller in my shop kind of digs into the dirt floor. Uh, the battery tray, as you see right there is made from uh, one and a half inch uh, angle by uh, one eighth uh, with the expanded metal for the bottom of it as well you can see in the front there there's a tr another tray made entirely of expanded metal that's uh, for a small fuel tank now just a couple of things that I should mention about the base there uh, you'll notice that the uprights are all bolted into it and that was so that it had some flexibility with what design of uh, motor mounts, what you know, sort of engine, uh, you know, type I was putting on here. This is in particular is designed for this small block uh, Chevy V8. Um, I don't see any reason why you couldn't make one of a similar design for any type of engine. Um, I should mention that the bolts are uh, the bolt holes through the base piece for things like uh, the bolts for the uprights are all sleeved so that it, when you torque the bolts down you don't collapse the tube. I think that's pretty important because you don't want to pull the bolt right through and then have your engine flopping all over the place. Another thing I should uh, mention is that the casters I'm using here are not locking casters but it might be a good idea to uh, use uh, locking casters since uh, you, it's not too likely you're going to want this engine dancing all over uh, your shop as you know, after you run it for a little while, especially if it's got a lot of uh, vibration or lope or anything like that to it. Okay, now we'll look at some of the dimensions here. Uh, probably the most critical dimension I'll mention is the dimension for the longitudinal supports. Now these are the long, what I'm calling the longitudinal supports. They run parallel to the uh, engine crankshaft and I would call these ones the transverse supports. Just so you have some idea what I'm talking about and I'm referring to these uh, as the uprights. Now the only critical dimension I would refer to and I might have mentioned it in the early one of the earlier segments here, but I'm going to re-mention it again. Is the distance outside to outside on the uh, longitudinal tubes, which is 20 and a quarter inches. Now that works out well, once again, because of the motor mounts. It places this sleeve on the outside edge of this uh, upright tube. It's a half inch sleeve. Uh, Apart from that, nothing is really that critical, and I'll give you some of the other dimensions here just for your own reference. This front tube, once again, not critical for any reason. Outside, or full length of it is 26 inches. The rear tube that runs along the back from the outside to the outside is uh, 30 inches. Uh, the overall length uh, to, to this location is 
27 inches. Now those are all, you know, adjust them to however you want there. Like I said, the only dimension that I consider critical was the distance between the longitudinals. Uh, otherwise, adjust it to whatever you see fit. If you got a bigger engine, you know, stretch that footprint out a bit so that it's not uh, unstable. Okay, next we'll move on to the front upright or the front motor mount upright, I should say. Okay, there's uh, the front motor mount upright. Now, the approximate height from the uh, base of it, that's the top edge of this tubing, to the top of this tubing is approximately 15 and a quarter inches with a half inch sleeve bored out to a little bit larger than 3 8 inch. Now that's what worked for me and this motor mount type. Once again that I believe is from a 69 Impel SS. Maybe something different. It may be quite a common one. I imagine it would be since I imagine they didn't use a different one for you know the engines of that era. Uh, you'll see the rad support is attached to this with some uh, square U bolts. Uh, nothing too critical there. Now the distance from the front edge of the front support to the rear uh, upright is 21 and a quarter inches. Now this one is actually a little bit tweaked. It's actually 21 and a half inches at the top and you can see it's pulled it to the front edge of that. The one on the other side is actually lying at the back edge of this motor mount. So those are your limits uh, for this particular motor mount for that distance. Otherwise, if you go outside of that, you're going to probably be doing some cutting on, uh, on your tubing there. Okay. Now, apart from that, nothing too critical about that. I welded some uh, uh, offcuts of, uh, of square tubing onto the bottom cut, you know, a miter cut. Uh, once again, the base uh, you know, holes that go through the base tubing are all sleeved to prevent them from collapsing. 